All right. Well, uh, thanks for joining. This is John Jay and Thursday evening. And I've got Moco and I've got Jim here too. And I think Ray's over there. You all right, Ray? I'm here. He's and, here. Uh, I, escaped, <laughs> I, I literally escaped the hurricane. Um, and, you know, in Orlando, we are, we are protected by the landmass, which is about 100 miles from the coast of the, the Gulf Coast to where I am, Orlando on the other side. And Disney Castle until they want to until yeah, well, they the, bring the, it down. The castle, <laughs> the castle has been really wonderful over the years in blocking some of the gusts of wind across the state. So it does protect many people because we have such, you know, so many trees. We have the Ocala National Forest here. So that does slow the wind down. So if you see a Cat 4 type rating of the hurricane hitting the Gulf Coast, know that it's under Cat 1 by the time it gets to Orlando. <laughs> And it's no, no laughing matter. People have been hurt and killed and damaged property and all this stuff in the billions. Uh, but I'm just saying it, it, we, we got lucky. So I'm very fortunate. That. Now, if we had a, a hard one that came directly into Cocoa Beach, that'd be a problem. But literally, this one went over my house. So uh, anyways, um, yeah, so we were down to under like 85 mile an hour winds or something. So we just have to clean up the yard. Yes. But as it turns out, I wasn't even here. I, I went to Yellowstone. I went to the mountains. <laughs> Did you see Yogi Bear? I, no, but I, I uh, just really quick, guys, because you know you, some of you going to ask me anyways. Ran into a couple of coyotes out hiking. Oh my god! Had to go the other way. Seriously, you don't want to. You don't want to go with those things. I mean, they, they look docile. They look like your neighbor's dog, but they're not. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're like what's so in the bag. <laughs> we had to change our plan several times because of the wildlife there. It was amazing though. And then we ran into some bears. We had to leave. <laughs> Then this black bears, you know, but still, you know, a couple of bears. And then we had an episode where the cops were called. <laughs> Why yeah, is that? I didn't do anything. I was helping and <clears throat> they had to take my name and it was a very friendly encounter, but the cops were called. So <laughs> they were called on you? No, no, but I was involved. So that's all I'm going to say. That's oh. all I'm gonna say. <laughs> you called them. <laughs> No, 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 I wouldn't do that. But it wasn't necessary, but this is how things go. But anyways, it was a fun time. It was a really fun time. I'm glad. I, I promise I didn't break any laws, at least that I know of. I'm yeah, I saw on the south side of that hurricane dozens of uh, tornadoes, though. Did That's the big damage. Up. Yeah, mm -hmm. the hurricanes are the big damage. Terrible damage. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, so as you, as you guys know, we always talk about money, and uh, we talk about what you know, what kinds of, times of uh, kinds of things that people run into all the time, mm -hmm. claims on your money. And that's why we even care about this subject. What are we talking about? Consumer debt, taxes, you know, that's consumer debt, mm -hmm. it's that nature. And then uh, uh, the the legal system <laughs> itself, which is the problem. And yeah. I, think, I think we're getting into the different aspects of how the legal system is actually unfair or it's fair to not us. It's fair to like the money system, the banks. The legal system. Right. And also, I mean, once you're in this, once you get like dinged by the legal system and like say you're in a divorce proceeding or whatever, what all, do you have time to protect your assets from the onslaught? How does that work? Yeah, of course. I mean, everybody can always do it. There are, there are situations where it's, it's gone. Like for example, if you, if you call me like the other day, someone called yesterday, someone called me and said he, he was uh, inherited money from an estate. Well, he inherited it. <laughs> That means it went through probate or it went through some process whereby you cannot undo the nature of how that property was conveyed. So he stuck with whatever tax consequences there were. So you just work from there. But yeah, uh, you can mitigate loss and risk and if you know what's coming, if you know what's coming. Many, many of the conversations I have with clients that have, let's say, been a client for more than a year, you're in two, three, four, five years out and you're calling me because you're not sure about the conversation I had with you three years ago. Uh, and we've already solved the problem of, let's say, debt collections. We just want, want to make sure that you understand the consequences of what's going on. <clears throat> so you're getting these scary letters from lawyers, but we've already covered that. We've already protected you from that. So it doesn't matter what the lawyers will do. They'll go to court. They'll get a judgment. They'll use the judgment to try to take your property. But we've already anticipated that. So that's what we, that's what I like to show people is, you know, we, we're trying to get through life and serve our families and enjoy the fruits of our labor, right? It sounds like a cliche. And no, then, it doesn't. You've got people that are, let's call them people. Let's be extra nice tonight. Okay. And they are, they are 
not putting productive things, valuable things into the economy to get money. They're making a claim on your money. Right. And, and without me being so ambiguous, I'll just say where most of us are going out and working in the real world. Now, maybe some of you are lawyers. You just have to take this how you want to take it. I don't care what your feelings are. This is kind of describing what we all think we can come to a consensus on. Lawyers aren't producing anything. Mm -hmm. They are advancing claims against mon other people's money and property. Okay, and maybe that's a necessary part of our economy, but I think it's right now it's unfair and it's being used in an abusive way. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to mitigate this. And I'll give an example. With the debt collection system, many years ago, I, I reverse engineered it. And it, one thing led to another. And over a period of like, you know, I don't know, 12 years, I've been doing this for almost 31 years now. After about 12 years, I figured out how to make someone totally uncollectible. I don't care if he's getting sued by everybody, including the IRS and the Department of Ed. And you can make yourself completely uncollectible and never pay a dime to your creditors and do it legally. And so that's what I show many people how to do. But it's not just that. It's not some trick that give you a free ride. What you're trying to do is learn how to use money while you're also fending off these creatures. Oops, I said creatures. <clears throat> so that's how I make the distinction. We go out and produce something to a value. And yeah, some lawyers, they actually help people. I've had lawyers help me with things and it's worth money. But many times they're exploiting people and they're using the legal system in an unfair way as if they own the law. <laughs> You know, so the debt collection system for consumer debt, you can make yourself uncollectible. All right. And I and I lumped that in that category, state and federal income taxes. You can legally make yourself uncollectible. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, you can make the government your your best creditor if, if you're going to be wise with the use of your money. It's a good idea, actually, <clears throat> if you can do that. And then and so lately we're getting into the, the other aspects of our economy. And I just want to brush on something uh regarding retail sales, because I think it's important to consider what types of financial risks are out there. We all understand taxes and being sued and all these things um, and estate plans, but uh, look at look at uh, the trend for retail sales. I'm still seeing people wear um, surgical masks on their face. Right. First of all, that was asinine to start with. I mean, and whoever thought that was a good idea, come on guys. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, that's not the purpose of this call. I don't want to get it too far into that, but so, so people, so this whole, the phony um, fake, you know, what was used to persuade and coerce people into changing the way they, they do business and, and getting people to accept new technology in the course of, of, of buying and selling. Right. <clears throat> so that's why you see everywhere you go, download this app, download this app. That's what it's all about. Elaine, did you want to ask something? Uh, no, the, the problem solved itself. There was a message saying that I couldn't participate in chat because there were too many people in chat. And I just did a test message and it went out. So we're I'm able to, to save it, which is all. We're trying to What's spoof that? you so you won't we're trying to spoof you so you won't say anything. <laughs> like <laughs> so much, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so anyways, that there's that going on. So in the retail space, this is it's it's a double-edged sword, okay? So it's changing. It's tech, technology is taking over, and you guys can understand what that is. But uh you, you're gonna see the the dissolution of your uh retail space. You're you're gonna see look at office space already. I would never buy an office building. Who's going to rent for me? They're all working out of their homes, right? Mostly. I mean, I'm speaking generally, but I wouldn't uh, invest in office space right now. In fact, there's probably way too much of it. So unless I can convert it to something. <clears throat> so retail space, okay, fast food and consumer goods for the most part is going going to be replaced just like taxi cabs have been replaced with software. That's happening. With what? Software. Software will allow you to request the thing you want and have it delivered to you. And maybe that's a good thing. I mean, maybe there's some really smart people on this earth that are, they can't reason with us. So what they're doing is they're tricking us and coercing us into capitulating to a system that they've already forecasted based on real statistics that they're not sharing with us. Maybe I shouldn't say that. But anyways, the trend is goodbye retail locations and we're replacing that with technology where you're expected to basically stay in your home. And it's already happening. I mean, with children that would normally be outside playing in the summertime, I watched this whole entire summer 
I hardly saw any children out playing and I, and I drive through neighborhoods to go to my house. So that's already happening. It's normal now. Children not, not outside playing. That is, I've never, craziness. That's crazy. I mean, I feel like sending a letter to all the neighbors and just in one neighborhood saying, Hey, I, I just want to let you know that just because your children are now addicted to video games and they're stuck in the house and they're not out playing like uh, we used to in the, in the 80s and the 90s, I could just drive through the neighborhood at 95 miles an hour safely. So that's what I will be doing from now on. <laughs> you know, just to get their attention. Yeah. So anyways, um, retail sales are going to be, you know, as you can see, converted to um, software and phones. And what you're going to find out is uh, right now you see the Amazon person delivering things pretty soon. It's going to be replaced by a drone or five. <laughs> so that's, I, I mean, it could be a good thing. I just, just, you guys probably already know this. And then the, the part I don't like is, is this total surveillance where, uh, if you're using, if you're going to be compelled to use your phone already, you're already, for everything, everything wants to loop your phone number into every transaction. It's kind of hard to get around that. And then that your phone is connected to all, every aspect of your life. So just this is really dangerous, dangerous here. Um, we, I don't want to get too far into that. But um, the trend is that the economy is, is going this way. And maybe that's a good thing for uh, um, the use of the uh, rights of way, the, the roadways. Maybe we need to do that. Maybe there's the population explosion is going to be so large. No one's run the numbers on this. I haven't. I don't have the statistics, but maybe the population expansion will be so large that it would overwhelm every system we have and it would shut down most of the economies in an unpredictable way. And maybe there's some smart people saying we need to, you know, head this off and we can't convince these people uh, with rational thought. We're going to have to scare them and make up this climate change BS and phony pandemics and things like that. Maybe that's what's going on. But I like to look at things in terms of how can I benefit? I'm an entrepreneur. Uh, and I see these trends. You guys have seen them. Just put them into words. Describe them. Discuss them with your friends. Here's what I'm thinking. If the retailers are going to be selling things like Amazon is competing with Walmart, right? I can sell Walmart products. I can sell Walmart products on a website. I'm not Walmart. Since when in history can you would you have done that? This is fantastic. You can get a piece of all the retail sales. Isn't that fantastic? I mean, that's almost like sales tax. <laughs> and you can get a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny, and a teeny, tiny sliver, okay? And still make a bunch of money. And when I say a bunch of money, I'm saying, if you're making, let's say you're making five to $8,000 a month right now, and you're happy and everything's good, you can make twenty dollars or $30,000 a month with just a teeny, tiny sliver of retail sales that's available to you right now. Look at uh, the the big name brands that you could you could you could sell the products that are being sold right now to the big name brands like Best Buy and you know even Bed Bath and Beyond and, and Walmart and and all these places. You can sell these yourself. So, anyways, it's it's just something to look at. And uh, like I was saying at the beginning of this call, so we we're talking about consumer debt, and I wanted to look at I want to talk about this phenomenon that you should be taking advantage of. Get, get a piece of retail sales. Retail sales are only going up. There's only going to be more people. <laughs> more people buying more stuff. I was at Ross today. How many people were buying stuff? And the parking lot was just full, just full. It's like, and it's not really with Christmas. It's not, it hasn't to do with Christmas. Just people buying stuff. Let me know if you guys, if I get a pause here. Well, yeah, you paused for a second, but it went away. Right. But, but. Do you think also people want to have that shopping experience because they want to be out and about and they like to be around people? So there always be that. Oh yeah. It, should there also be like just places where you know we we just you know create a little? There's know. gonna be. It's just like it's always gonna be like that. People like myself are going to want. Like today, I went to buy something and the guy was telling me about this link on a phone app, and and he could tell I, I was not into that. I said, stop telling me to download a link on my phone. I'm not doing it. And he goes, or you can just come in here and we'll do a handshake deal. And I said, that's more like it. <laughs> it's like, okay, you know? So yeah, I mean, it's a sales process. So when you see the trend going, there's always going to be those people that want to interact with you face to face. Mm -hmm. And fine, there's always going to be that niche market. Yeah. But for, for the most part, why not have the ability or the means? <sighs> why not create that to go get a piece of the retail sales? There's all kinds of people are doing it. Everybody's doing it. I mean, you've done it before. I know I know all of you on this call bought something from Joe who was selling it in his Amazon store. <laughs> Why? Because his price was one penny less than the other guy. I know you did that. <laughs>
So anyways, but uh, back to consumer debt. So what, what I'm trying to do is show people where if you recognize the problem, if you can put it into words, I think you can solve the problem or come close to it. If you can describe the fact that you have lawyers, a legal system that has usurped our judicial power, and we forgot that we're the ones that gave it to them and is stomping all over it. Uh, we can reclaim that somewhat and, it, and we can do it in a situation where we need to reclaim it because our property is being taken. So we have this other phenomenon where the property is being taken like overtly and, and like divorce proceedings. Okay. This is liquidation. Shouldn't be happening that way. Land grabs. And we can re in reclaiming our power. We can maybe solve some of these problems. And the way I think we can do that is with these easement agreements, mm -hmm. HOA covenants, we mm -hmm. can exclude bar members from those contracts and the disputes mm -hmm. of those contracts, and we can make them ex uh, away from the uh, trial court system. <clears throat> Not By having an arbitration dispute resolution? Yeah. We can use arbitration and get away from the, the trial court system. So we're doing this already with easements, and mm -hmm. we're using easements. Ray may have some comments on this, but we use easements when people have claims being made on the title to their property. So what we're doing is we take the property rights out of the title, we, we give them to the easement holder and we allow the title holder who's about to be having his property take property rights taken in an unfair system. We convert all those to the easement, the grantee where he has control over it, but not the ownership. Mm -hmm. And then we exclude the court from saying anything about that. Mm -hmm. It gives you some power. Yeah, it's really exciting. And we've got two like, you know, about to like go on. So we'll, we'll these have lawyers to, don't like it. They're claiming it's fraud and all this, but it's their <laughs> system. But it's so silly. Their, their, their little yeah. like cuffs are so silly. You know, what's funny is uh, back in the early 2000s, when I, when I saw what the banks were doing with the arbitration, they were using arbitration to, to make it cheaper to get judgments against people as if it was difficult already. I mean, anyways, they were doing that on a large scale. And um, I went to the court and I tried to make a legal argument. I did lots of research and I tried to make the argument that it was unfair or that it was fraudulent or something. And I could never satisfy the criteria for those claims. And I couldn't win that way. And the banks kept just rolling right over all my defenses and everything. So I thought, okay, if that's what the banks want to do, let's do that to them. So I was only able to beat them by copying them and making it so big, so fast that they had to stop because they didn't like what I was doing because they wanted to be the only ones doing it. And now here we are exercising judicial power that mm -hmm. they're trying to take away. Just like mm -hmm. I, I give the example, this is what your bar memberships are, are doing. Okay. Your state bar association. These are unlicensed professionals. These are members of a private membership association. They're not licensed at all. Your lawyers are, don't have any licensing to be a lawyer. Um, they are acting as if they own the law. So this is like, this would be like you owning Tuesday. So let's say you want to own Tuesday. What would you do to try to own Tuesday? Meaning, let's say, let's give you some idea of what ownership means. It's mine. You can't use it. And I can sell it whenever I feel like it. Did, would that fit the criteria for me owning Tuesday? Mm -hmm. <laughs> can I sell Tuesday? I mean, so, so this is what these idiots are trying to do. They're trying to mm -hmm. own the law, just like you might try to own Tuesday. Ain't going to happen. However, they're they're bludgeoning our access to the law. That's really what's happening. Mm -hmm. So what, they, they were here a long time ago. They were here longer than we've been alive. I can tell you right now. It, it, yeah, as, as, as absurd as that sounds, they're already in motion doing it. Uh, they are tokenizing and securitizing yeah. everything. The sun, right. colonization. Yeah, uh, all resources, but yeah, the law itself, no, they want to they want to ration out ration out the law, which mm -hmm. they've been doing. And so we're we're going around that and saying, wait a minute, we gave you the judicial power in the first place. Uh, now we're going to exercise it. <laughs> we don't need you. We don't need you lawyers to do that. Okay, I might need a brain surgeon for something. I might need a doctor to set a broken arm, but. Um, you know, I might need a lawyer to make a technical legal argument in the uh, Supreme Court for me. All right. Or maybe I need a, a lawyer to make a technical legal argument in a, a murder case. But I don't need them to fill out a stupid form. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're foreign agents. They're, so why, did, why, did, why, did, why did they switch back and forth from calling themselves attorneys and lawyers? You see it constantly in the documentation. Like, you yeah, know, why is that? Yeah. They you know, oh. one, they they say I'm a lawyer representing so and so, but yet on the letterhead it says attorney at law. 
And yeah. they don't call himself attorney. They don't call himself. They use the lawyer. terms interchangeably. Yeah. So it's just understand this is what we're dealing with. Okay. So everything that affects you when you leave your door in the front door in the morning or before, I mean, everything originates from lawyers doing stuff. Mm -hmm. Without the lawyers, you wouldn't have to have the phony pandemic. Think about it. The lawyers were the ones that allowed it to per be perpetrated. Yeah, they're the ones who wrote the policy. Yeah, if the lawyers weren't involved, <laughs> what are they going to do? Nothing. They can't do it. So, anyways, so that's going on. But with what we're what we're trying to promote here and talk about is solving problems, real problems, and and doing it in a legal way in in a judicial forum that mm -hmm. we create. And the court system has been given the power to administer laws and things of that nature, but we don't need them. We, it's our option in most cases. And mm -hmm. when we have the opportunity, I recommend using an arbitration provision, make sure that you have something set up to where you, have, you can convene a panel of arbitrators. I just really like the example that Gene Roddenberry wrote in there. Now, I don't know if it was Gene Roddenberry, but in Star Trek, whenever in the Next Generation series, um, they, whenever there was a, a dispute between alien races, they always called on Captain Picard, right? As the arbiter. As the arbiter. And why not? He's an intelligent, educated person, a rational person, right? And people trust him. And he'll tell you to, to drop dead if he doesn't agree with you. He doesn't care if he's your friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they like that about him. So he he can be a good neutral arbitrator in many cases. Mm -hmm. And so why, why can't we be doing things like that? That mm -hmm. takes a level of responsibility and a little bit of education, which we can certainly have. And so anyways, I hope that um, we can learn how to do that and look at what my team is doing. Okay. So we're looking at easements. There's land grabs going on. Um, if you want to, you know, convey some of your property rights from the title into an easement, maybe you can use it to raise money to develop some land. Think about this. There's a lot of uses for easements. The same with an HOA covenant. HOA covenant is the last lien on the title different than an easement, right? An easement is regarding the use of the property. Okay. So an easement is the law of the use of the property. And it's a settled matter. The title is a claim on the title. That's all you can do with the title is you make a claim on the title. If you're the HOA covenant, that's the last claim on the title. So once all the other claims are settled and satisfied, HOA can do something and no one else can do something after that. That's the most power. We should be using that. We should be using it like, for example, I've got one right now where I think what I'm doing is I understand that I can use. So for example, let's say I have some land uh, and I want to I want to put a well on it. And the, the county says, you need a permit. I say, okay, I'll get a permit. I'll get the permit from the HOA. Not from the county. Hmm. Now when the county says, hey, you're supposed to get a permit from us and you read the statute and it says, get a permit. It doesn't say get a permit from you. Ooh. But what if it did? Okay, well, um, I didn't want to get a permit from you. I get a permit from, I do have a permit and it's public record. It's recorded. You can record them. And I paid a fee for it, but I didn't pay it to you. So if you don't like that, the statute says you can foreclose on the property. But if you do so, just be aware that the HOA who did give me the permit can foreclose on you. You see Ow. how powerful this is? Yeah. This is us doing what we're supposed to be doing. We have the remedy. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying, you know, let's get out of property taxes. Okay, but there's got to be a purpose. I'm not just trying to, trying to pay less. Uh, there's got purpose. My purpose would be, here's what I'm thinking, is to bring up the issue. Why is it necessary for my taxing jurisdiction, my county, my state, to loop in my property in the payment of taxes and the collection of taxes when it could just do so with sales tax? Why? And then alcohol and spirits and all this, right? And fuel. Why and and the transportation for for commerce? Why not tax those areas of our society more and not loop in a property tax into the title of my property so that you can then manipulate me in the future, which is what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the reason not to pay the property tax, not the money. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that they can use your property to have the financial interest in Wall Street remove large sections of our uh, population from being able to own property, real estate. This is the problem right now that we're talking about. That's why you want to fight that battle, I think. It's because it's, it's done for, uh, what do you call it, um, an insidious purpose, really. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're using it for equity stripping. It's been weaponized. 
That's right. BlackRock is doing this and jacking up all the pricing. I mean, we see this in different areas right now where you got Wall Street corporations that are trading an interest in these, let's say, residential homes that, you know, your your normal real estate investor would buy. He might buy mm -hmm. two or five or seven of these things. Right. Well, these guys own 2000 of them and they're trading. They're trading an interest on these properties on Wall Street. So this jacking up the price artificially. Um, I, I was looking at a property over here and in some it's it's near Sanford in, in Florida. And I'm looking at something and uh, my partner came down from Atlanta and he's got this application on his phone and he, he points it at the house, takes a picture and it gives him all the information on there. And he, what we found out in like one second was that the house was artificially being sold between two trust organizations to jack up the price to make it look like it was worth more in a period of a year and a half. <clears throat> the comp value, if you go by the, price that it was sold for each time went up like a hundred thousand dollars that's fake and then we tried to rent it out that's that's why i called my investor on my friend over there because i said well let's look at this thing because i can't even <laughs> rent it out i tried to apply for the lease application i went through the lease application process and couldn't do it it's impossible the way they made it, they made it they lumped everything together so you couldn't qualify there's no way you can get through the lease application so they don't they don't care it's just fake so uh, so that we're seeing that more and more so just people are being exploited be aware of what's going on try to describe it in words and then work with people and then so what i'm suggesting is this now okay so let me give you an example somebody asked me the other day how do you how do you compete with a situation where you have wall streeters buying up all these single family residentials when your local real estate investor would normally do that and he would make a good living off of it maybe he'll make a quarter million dollars a year but he'll own five or seven or 10 uh, residential properties and he'll take care of them. The government doesn't have to be involved. He'll clean them up and get everything all nice because he wants to make money that way, right? Well, how do you compete with the Wall Streeters that don't want to actually make some residential property better for the neighborhood? They would just rather put it on a, a description on their books and then trade it on the stock stock exchange or something. Mm -hmm. So that they, don't, they don't care about the neighborhood, right? So how do you compete with that? They're getting money from you know, people probably very sophisticated type of money. Mm -hmm. So why not think about this guys? I'm gonna tell you something that I don't know what to talk about. Why not create, write up a private placement memorandum, file it with the SEC and raise capital and raise $10 million and go buy some real estate like the people on Wall Street. You can do that. If you put a little work into it for, for a very small amount of money, you can have a lawyer do this for you. And you can register your company in LLC. Many of you have them. <laughs> you can register with the SEC. And you can what you do is you don't ask permission. You just tell the SEC what you're doing. That's it. And every, every year, you just renew the filing. Why not? Do you explain that again, John? Yeah. I don't, I don't yeah let's, say, let's say I want to buy some... In an, I'm working in, let's say, five neighborhoods, let's say, in a town, and I want to buy three or four, maybe eight single family residentials, and I want to rent them out, just like any other real, real estate investor. Well, it's difficult for me to do that because I can't get the financing because the way the property has been sold and bought in the last three years by the Wall Streeters makes it makes rules me out. I, I can't qualify for a mortgage because I'm, I don't I'm not like those creatures. So what do I do? Well, I can go solicit capital from people. I can ask people for money and I can go find it. The problem is if I solicit capital in order to make the capital work, the people that invest the money need a security interest in what I'm doing. And I can't give it to them unless I'm registered with the SEC. I can't solicit it unless I'm registered with the SEC. So there's, there's a way that you can do this without selling your company. You are selling your company, but you're not, it's not a, you're not listing on the stock market, okay? You're just getting permission or you're you're get, you're qualifying to be able to offer people the opportunity to buy your company. You sell them shares and then you use that money to buy the real estate that you couldn't buy before because you wouldn't meet the bank's uh, underwriting criteria. So this is just a different way to get financing. Now, once I get the financing this way, let's say I just want $3 million. I would do an SEC, what's called a private placement memorandum. I would just give notice to the SEC and tell them what I'm going to do. And then I would go do it. 
I would have seminars. I would do advertising. I would bring capital in. I would bring people in and say, look, you can make eight to 12% on your money. They would be screaming to do that. Yay. Believe it or not, people with like sitting on $7 million or $50 million, some of them don't know that they can make eight to 12%. The bank's telling them they can make 1%. Or they're they're hunting for that you know one percent or something or they're just putting money in gold because they don't know any better. But if you have if you have this ability, you can pay eight to four eight eight to twelve percent typically is what is what the numbers are, right? So now you're able to then use other people's money to pay them a very nice dividend, and for yourself you can make money on other people's money. You can make a part of that. What if you get into deals and you're making thirty eight percent? You're still paying eight to twelve percent to the investor. He's happy. Mm -hmm. So if this, I don't know if this answers your question, Elaine, but an SEC notice is a way to give the government notice saying, look, I'm going to raise capital. Here's my prospectus. Here's what I'm going to tell people. And that way it's all legal. I can now solicit investor capital to then invest it. I can invest with other people's money. That's what investments are, not with your own money. Make sense? Oh. I, I would still have to know people I can ask for money. Well, that helps. It does help. But you can, it's just a regular, good old fashioned marketing job. That's all it really is. So where I tell people, go go get some money and, and invest in real estate, you can get it from the seller. Okay, that's where you start. You get it from the seller, right? You can get it from the bank. You can get it from your Uncle Bob. So there are other there are ways to borrow money and there are ways to get funding. You can do funding as an equity partner, like you can bring in somebody that's going to get a part of the deal down the road, or he can just be a lender, right? Uh, you can you can use the bank for this. Okay, that's the old school way of doing it. You can use the Carlton Sheets method, you know, creative financing that you've heard before from a long, long time ago. But like I'm explaining right now, you can actually get investors to buy shares in your LLC. All you have to do is tell the SEC what you're doing. That's another way to do it. Then it just now you've now you've converted your your problem or your task of having to get financing, you've converted that into a marketing problem. That's much easier to solve, I think, for many of us than than it is to go qualify for financing. Now check this out. Let's say I get the marketing done and I get my seven accredited investors, let's just say, and five that are not, and we're together. We have like you know twelve million dollars in the in the company. And it's rolling along and everybody's happy and maybe we're, we're, we're after, out nine months out or maybe we're a year and a half out, something like that. And I've got a nice balance sheet. I've got all these investors. I've got a nice balance sheet. I've got, I bought some assets. It's working out pretty good. Even if something doesn't perform for a while, that's okay. What can I do with that balance sheet? Hmm. Anybody? More money. Thank you. And how long would that have taken me? Let's say it takes five years. So what? How many people spend think it's worthwhile to spend four years in college for something? What if it takes you five years to, to work with $12 million you've raised in that period of time? You're making money during that time. And then five years later, you're going to borrow against this nice asset you've created and double it. If you're working with $12 million and you borrow, let's say you borrow... $8 million against the asset you acquired with the $12 million. Now what? Now we're looking at what? You have a net worth of $20 million. What is $20 million for you doing for you compared with the 12 million? It's making you more money faster, isn't it? You see how that works? If you just work with a few people before you, let's say you're, let's say you're 19 years old and you're, you're thinking of going to college. If instead you figured out how to do a private placement memorandum, which I'm going to tell you right now, it will take you, roughly 90 minutes to understand the whole thing do you use ai for that what do you use no. ai no 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 no. you don't need ai for that and and uh and i probably shouldn't even tell you guys make it i shouldn't tell you this but <laughs> i don't know check it out for yourself check it out i'm giving you information that's probably worth millions of dollars right now <laughs> really check it out Okay. I mean, if you got, you know, young people in your family, why not have this conversation with them? Say, look, guys, stop wasting your time chasing your tail and try to get other people's approval so you can go out into the world and make money. That's what you're doing in college. You're getting other people's approval so that you can continue to seek other people's approval so you can continue to make more money for yourself. 
Is that really what you want to do? And that's why people get pissed off when they get older because they realize something's up. <laughs> I don't like doing that because when you're when you're 40, you're about reaching the age where you should be hiring people, you know, or creating opportunities for other people. So I'm just saying, keep the job, look for the job, get the job, go to college, learn stuff. But really, in the end, go do something that makes money. And you can use other people's money to do that. This is just one uh, one other way to do it. So goes back to the original part of what I wanted to discuss this evening, believe it or not. <laughs> I want to talk about consumer debt and how are people are being exploited. Who's doing it? We got to blame somebody, right? Uh, but we have to have to blame ourselves because we're letting it happen. So then I give you an example of the Wall Streeters and what they're doing. As you can see, you see this in the news. I'm describing it here. Now I'm also saying, here's what I think might be a solution. Go out and raise the capital to do what they're doing, except you're going to do it on a smaller scale. But so what? The dynamic is the same. You're going to use other people's money to make investments and you're going to make more money because you're using someone else's money. He's happy to get 10% on his money because you're making 27% on his money and you get to allocate it how you see fit because he agreed to that. <laughs> Perfectly legal. That's what is going to save you if it's needed, if that's needed in the near future is you got to think like this. We have the tools that are available. You don't have to go to law school. You don't have to go to business school. You don't have to go to, what is it? Wharton's College of Business or something, you know, like Trump did. You don't need all that stuff. The only reason to go there is so you have like some sort of standing with peers. That's really why you would go there. But you can get things done yourself. And don't work alone, you know? But uh, yeah, we, so we're, we like to have up, you know, have all these little, um, these legal procedures and techniques and strategies that we use for people. It's quite effective, um, but uh, realize the big picture of what's going on in the economy. And uh, I say the economy, because I, I use that term very loosely because I don't believe there is an economy. I think we have economic conditions that change all over the country every day. Um, and I think if, you, if you're intelligent, you use it, you are intelligent. I'm just saying, look at things intelligently. Meaning, get all the facts. Consult with someone else. That's how you do, look at things intelligently. Analyze things, okay? And then decide what works for you. If I, if you're in, let's say, I don't know, some city in California and the real estate market is not, let's say your average uh, closing date from the listing and closing date, your average time is going to be, let's say, 97 days. Okay, so that's a number. So you, you take that number and you go to, let's say, Atlanta and you look at the closing uh, period there. On, on single family residential, which let's say it's 32 days, which is the hotter market. Atlanta, right? Okay. You just probably made yourself a lot more money if you start buying property in Atlanta. You see, that that's what I'm saying is don't don't accept what you hear on the news is the economy is that. No, it's not. You don't even know what the economy is. Nobody does. What you can do is look at numbers in your actual area or where you're going to be investing. You can always do well if you do that. Don't look at the news as if it means something to you. Just like, I'm not going to watch the weather for the whole country if I live in Florida. In fact, I always make fun of my friends when they you know, want to tell me this and that and the weather of my wife and all this. And I say, look, just look outside. <laughs> really? I mean, really? Go look outside. You can usually forecast the day or most of the day, if you live in an area for a while and you look outside. So that's all I'm saying is think for yourself, okay? And know that um, one, of the, one of the ways, to, the path to solving a problem is first describing it, putting it in words. How do we describe the bar? The bar wants to own the law. Okay, so how is it doing that? Well, it, take, it has to take things from people and it has to give them to other people. Mm -hmm. That's the general of what's happening. Okay, we understand that's happening. And yeah, I hate it too. And I'm not sure that we're going to stop it anytime soon. But now that we now that we've described it, and I think we can we've described it in good enough terms that we can do something about it. So how do, what do we what do we do? Don't pretend. And it's also using procedures yeah. and 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 sort of word tricks to to stop. They do that. Yeah. They do that. Sure, they could do anything they want then, because like I said, they want to own the law. So where did it come from? Well, it, uh, th their involvement came from the the judicial power, which came from people, ultimately. And where did their method of dealing with each other come from? The days of uh, parliament in England. Robert's Rules of Order. And Robert's like Rules of Order. 
Where did where did all that come from? Why did what gave rise to a parliament? The king was a jerk. Think about it. What did people do? They said, okay, king, you've been a jerk for 30 years. We're kind of sick and tired of it, but we want you to be the king because it would create problem for us in trading with other countries. You're going to be the king, but we're going to take away your legislative authority. <laughs> and if you don't like it, we'll kill you. That's what it's going to take again. And that's well, how they created the, yeah. House, the House but of Commons. Is, that's what the House of it? Commons was, the House of Commoners. Yes, that, that's right. And what, but yeah. what does this demonstrate? It demonstrates that people originate the authority. Mm -hmm. We are the judicial power. Everybody else is the agent. So if we're going to let the agents run away with it, then we deserve what we get. <laughs> right. But we and have, that's what we're in right now, a situation where yeah. agents are running away with it. So Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, so we have the ability. So, yeah. And by the way, title companies, Batman, title companies are just lawyers just milking the system. They need to get rid of this crap. What a scam, title companies. They, they, in fact, they should make them illegal. They should make them like, they. in fact, we should make gambling legal and title companies illegal. <laughs> you know the funny thing is on on lawyers i mean guys we have a lot of power we could we could amend the rules uh, rules of uh rules of uh court for lawyers we could we could bind them up pretty good but the funny thing is the reason why um there's any sort of um membership requirement for being an attorney is because when they're involved with using the court system they are taking property and you didn't hear this from me i'm, I'm going to show you how to verify what i'm telling you if you're a real estate agent and you sell somebody's property, you commit a crime if you don't have a license. Why? Because you didn't have an interest in the property. Mm -hmm. So you can, you're saying you can't sell it unless you have an interest. That's correct. I'm so the ben you talk about the beneficial interest. No, no, no. Just an interest. No? Just nope. interest. You just have to have a financial interest in the property, and then you have the right to be involved in the sale or to conduct the sale. If you don't have an interest, you need permission from the government. That's why we have licensing. That's guys. what the license is. Okay. There you go. A license is a tax on the privilege of doing something that would otherwise be unlawful. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is very powerful information. Mm -hmm. The reason why we have a bar membership scenario is because lawyers are taking property in which they don't have an interest. So they need some accountability and they're very smart. They said, we don't want accountability with the police power. We want it with the judicial power. The bar created its own licensing within the court system. Every other license, and there's no licensing for them, but every license you get is with what branch of government? The, Secretary um, of State. Executive. The police power, the executive, mm -hmm. yes. But lawyers are not. Yeah, the lawyers are the only profession that have no licensing and are regulated by, not by the executive branch of government. Mm. They're regulated by themselves. And the reason being is because they're involved in the conveyance of property in which they have no interest. So once you can describe the nature of the beast, we can kick it in the ass. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what do we do now? Okay. So the way, the way you can really help yourself and help others is instead of protesting the tax system, and, and I've built my career on this, showing people who are tax protesters what to do in situations and do things legally. Okay. So I have to say mm -hmm. there's that, but uh, what you really want to do is improve your net worth, have good sense with using money and have the idea that you're going to use some of the things you learned in the last 10 years of your life to go make some more money and maybe do it with less work and you'll do it to serve others. And one of the easy ways to do that is to get involved with Etsy or Amazon or some retail sales operation, get a piece of the action. It's on, it's all around you. People are buying stuff. They have no choice today. I buy a bunch of stuff. I hated that. I, I but I needed these things. So I had to go buy them. You know, you're always going to do it. So why not be the guy selling it? At least that. I mean, some of you have some fantastic ideas. You're going to go out and do a thing and make a bunch of money. And okay. You know, but anyways, uh, but somebody's asking, okay, so how subjective is unconscionable? Well, we have, okay. It is, it is subjective. And because the reason why it's subjective, the term unconscionable, it shocks the conscience. Okay. As your court would say, 
you can go read what is a cognizable legal definition of unconscionable. The unconscionability of contracts, okay? You can go you can go see the case law on this. So we have to go by some standard, okay? So we we go by the standard that was set many years ago by educated people that were making decisions based on what they perceived to be fair and the existing laws of the time. And so <clears throat> this gives us a framework. So yes, it is subjective. It has to be. We hope it is. You can't really have it to be objective. There has to there has to be terms. If it's objective, that means it's amoral, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anything goes, whatever feels good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So any any technical questions? You guys have any technical questions? Give me a hard John, one. John, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, so let's say we did this uh, private placement to buy some real estate and compete against the big guys. Um, I think I've heard you say in the past that you look at a, a real estate transaction differently, like a lot of people and, you know, I might gravitate to thinking, oh, well, real estate is so overpriced in our area. Um, but I don't think you're looking at the, you know, flipping it, you're putting in the cash flow flow from the rental income in calculating your returns can you just talk a little bit about that how okay you so i'm i'm looking at the the big picture is i don't care if i have to buy it and sell it quickly to make my money or i'm just going to buy it and hold it and rent it or i'm going to pay cash for it and borrow against it i don't know i don't care i don't i don't care about wholesaling and flipping and whatever it takes now the people I'm working with have areas of expertise. So I'm kind of restrained by that, my team who I'm working with. I can't do it all either. So my mode of making money is going to be governed by what I know, right? Or who's on my team. But I really don't care. If it's real estate, then anything goes. That's how I look at it. Okay. Um, and, and so you would consider, if you could figure out the returns, um, when like i live in an area where it is so the real estate is so inflated the medium home price is outrageous yeah um how you would still consider buying and just you know working through the the cash flow on the um the rental income or fixing it up and figuring okay. it out okay well when, when you say the prices are inflated i don't look at it that way i look at it in terms of what my return on capital is so if I can make money at it, I don't care what the price is. I don't care. Can I rent it out for a price that nets me a certain income, right? Or return or what's my internal rate of return going to be? That's what I care about. I don't care what the asking price is. I don't care what the asking price is. I don't care what the price is. All I care about is getting the ability to control the title or buy it somehow if, if the numbers work out. Mm-hmm. Do you kind of look at the same criteria as like you've talked about um, how you look at buying a, say, an Etsy business? You know, you're looking at the cash. Exactly. Kind of those same ratios. Exactly. I look at it like a black box, cash in, cash out. Okay. It's a tool. So it's a tool for using money. And hopefully it's not going to be my money. Right. I, I, I want to use money to make money. And I, my best money is not my money. But the money I make, that's going to be my money. Mm -hmm. So how fast can I make it? That's what you want to look at. Nothing else matters. <laughs> I mean, there, there are people that are, um, my partner is a wholesaler. That's what he does. He's always going to do that. I try to get him into commercial, but he won't do it. But he's probably, he knows more than I do about that. Probably a good reason not to get into commercial. But he, he does really well with single family. You know, so you're, you're kind of limited to what, you know. I mean, you could spend maybe, let's say, let's say you spent three years putting together a commercial real estate deal on, a, let's say, a hotel, right? And maybe you're maybe you're selling it, right? And you're selling it um, and you're not a real estate agent. So, so the way you would sell a hotel if you're not a real estate agent is you would take an interest in the property. So there's ways of doing that. So you maybe spend three years on putting that deal together and then you might make a commission of, let's say, $1.8 million. Would that be pretty cool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that goes in your LLC. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. It goes in my pocket. I don't know. I don't care. You know, uh, but so imagine what you learn. 
if you if you did that imagine the things you would learn in that period of time that's that's more valuable than going to college if college is valuable at all yeah yeah, yeah i mean it, it, that's what i would do with my i don't say so my children everybody has his own thing right so i i try to get my children to do things that are kind of creative and take risk and and because they have 100% risk tolerance right because they're young i try to get them to do things like that and they're kind of you know inching toward that but they're human beings too, and, and they have fears just like I do, and, and all, all these things. So, so that factors in. But uh, I would try to coach the younger people into doing things like that. I mean, think about uh, over the years, um, areas where you might have blight in an area of like an area of town. What happens? The prices come down, right? And then real estate investors come in there. They take on the risk of what's involved with an area of blight even that's been condemned or whatever, and they'll, they'll clean it up. Why? Because they can make money. Why? Because they know how to do it. Your government does not do things like that. Your government needs the real estate investor to take care of property because your government agents are incompetent. They're not supposed to be competent. I'm not insulting them. I'm just saying they're not supposed to understand what to do. They might write, create the legislative framework to let the investor do it, and they might reward the investor with tax breaks. Oh, wait a minute. They already do that. You ever wonder why the real estate investor gets so rewarded by tax breaks and the guy who runs an Etsy store doesn't as well as the real estate investor? Because your government desperately needs real estate investors to clean up this the mess. They also need a way to park their own money too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things going on, but get look at the big picture, all right? Who's who's getting fired? What are you talking about, Eileen? Oh, I'm not me. I wasn't talking about anything. Oh, you put problem is they just fire employees with no options. Oh, uh, earlier when we were saying um, that the drones are going to take over these little guys that are delivering things, but they don't have the wherewithal. Like, where do they go to create another job if everything that they're qualified to do is being taken over it's by a drone? Be. This is getting well. It's not always. It's not always like that. It's going to be a change in our way of doing things. You're going to see. It's not going to be like all of well, a sudden. But people, people, people need that kind of education. That's when I. Guess yeah, I'm you're gonna you're gonna need that. If it's me, I don't. I know how drones work and all that and all the technical stuff. I I I don't know how to build them or anything. But I would just buy the company that makes the drones. But you have the money to buy it. These little guys don't. Oh, well, I could take my own cash and buy shares in the company that makes the drones. Oh, okay. you see what I'm saying. I can also create a uh, a second company that just does one thing. It buys the shares of the other company, and then I can sell shares in that company. That's what Berkshire Hathaway does. Mm. You can buy Berkshire Hathaway on the secondary market. You don't have to it's pay Buffett, right? Yeah, Buffett. You don't have to pay a quarter million dollars for a share. You could pay eighty seven dollars. <laughs> you know. So uh, I'm just saying there are there are ways to uh, to still be just fine. Okay when you see these changes happening no you can't go on there go all right that we're ever past this stop with present easement structure okay so imagine if, if you could make a law that would that would what do something to easements or something i don't know you're gonna have to the law is gonna have to be applied to easements but let's say that existing easements are going to be grandfathered in so the law wouldn't affect those easements this is a good question batman right so He's asking, can there be legislation that would impede the use of easements? If, if, let me know if I'm saying this correctly. Existing easements would likely be grand, grandfathered in. But remember that easements were around before the framework of our government. They're before the Constitution. This is why I keep telling you an easement is the law of the land. It is the Constitution of that land. Wow. Wow. Show me some law where it says the easement was unconstitutional. <laughs> it's outside the purview of the constitutional test. It is the law, just like a mortgage is. Show me some case law where there's a mortgage that was unconstitutional. Hmm. I can show you statutes that were held to be unconstitutional. Show us. Oh, okay. Uh, how about the one in Texas where the cops were allowed to then uh, card you all the time, ask for your ID? It was ruled to be unconstitutional. I mean, that's just one example. 
I mean, the Fourth Amendment and all these are always the First Amendment. Those are always the tested ones, right? The ten, the ten amendments were the always tested, and you'll see lots of. But but when it comes to easements, I don't know. I'm sure there's some example somewhere. I mean, you guys could probably find something a counterpoint from what I'm saying. But generally, an easement is the law. So uh, imagine. I mean. Imagine your legislature making a law regarding easements. What would it do? It would say something like, an easement cannot be conferred upon a certain type of party. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. We need easements. We need the administration of easements. Right. This is an area of law that we can have, that we can use. It's not, they, they can't reach it very easily. They can create <laughs> statutes and try to force you into using the statute. That's why lawyers, they, they if something is not within a statute, they, they, they can't function. Their brain shows. <laughs> right. They <should> have. <laughs> They can't think about law. They don't know what law is. All they know is to be parents. What? Yeah. So on the on the arbitration clause, I mean, we don't show it to people. It just happens to be part of the contract, right? So if I have an easement that includes an arbitration clause for disputes, then that's just part of the law. So if there's a dispute or there's a new title holder that comes in there and thinks he doesn't have to follow along, he gets a new lesson in what the law is because... The, the easement, which he agreed to because it was public record, he was given notice, he acquired the title rights, therefore he's subject to the terms of the easement. They'll no. learn. <laughs> I want to sell Tuesday. I'm trying to figure that one out. No, you can't go on that. All right. Anything else? Moko, did, did I? Is there anything else I can add in? Well, there's stuff at the end. Batman's having a meltdown. He's saying, I but see. could they could they ban arbitration? Can they stop arbitration uh, for private property deals and only that? Can they make a law? I'm just going to answer all his questions by saying possibly <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we all know that it hasn't happened yet. You know, it's like last week where I was talking about the the one guy's hypothetical. John, what happens when I get this letter? <laughs> oh, you're sure you can get this letter? Well, heck, but right, if you're not right. smart. Um, can you help me buy some stock? You know. <laughs> so. Now, uh, Sean's asking, what about putting easements on the properties obliterated by hurricanes and floodwaters? Okay, first of all, you have to have standing. So if you're a title holder, you can put easements on there. But for what purpose? What happens if, like, Ray, tell me this. You, you mentioned this before. What happens if you have an easement and the government wants to overcome the easement, maybe with eminent domain or something? Isn't, isn't the easement still upheld? They will, on the on the only test cases I saw, they were, it was the conservation easements over in North Carolina. All right. Prior to all the storm stuff. And yeah, they overrode that. And it was an irrevocable conservation easement and they revoked it by so public was it, police power. Was it through the eminent domain? Or in a yeah, they use eminent, yeah, they use eminent so, domain. So they got an injunction against uh, in, in the terms of the easement. So yeah, I guess you could do that. I mean, you could pretty much do it. Yeah. Sorry, one second. Conservation easement is a very particular kind of easement. That is one set up by. It's um, also statutory, which probably has provisions right. that allow it to be. Yeah, it's a very particular domain. kind of easement yeah. because well, it's, it's an easement. It's a permission easement. A conservation easement is a permission easement, and it's mainly used to get tax. You don't pay property tax. Yeah. When you put right. in a conservation easement, and it's uh, it's statutory. So if you're right. a statutory, they could probably overcome it with them in a domain. Right. But the easements that we're dealing with are express they're easements. Not, yeah, they're not. Well, they're, they're not different. statutory. Right. They're not relying. No, they're not on statutory. They're, they're contract in reality. Yeah. Yeah. So we're making yeah. our own laws. We're not saying, yeah, what he said. We're making our mm -hmm. own laws. Yeah. Right. But I mean, yeah, but, you know, even even given that, if yeah. North Carolina Power had a power line going through that property, they couldn't mess with it. I mean, they didn't mess with it. They couldn't. Correct. They could not. Yeah, they, That's correct. Yeah, I mean, those easements, you know, uh, the utility. They might have taken it with eminent domain, but they still couldn't stop the pipeline and the power line yeah. and the, the, that yeah. pre-existed. Yeah, so so it's just, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, sure, you can kill somebody. I mean, but is that going to happen? Is somebody going to try to kill you? Probably not. But so 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 that's true. So so the eminent domain does not screw with utility easements. Which is what I'm talking about. They call those utility easements when power lines and pipelines go through. Well, eminent domain take... is very narrow. There has to be a, a compelling state interest. There has to be mm -hmm. some justifiable reason to, to to exercise eminent domain. You can't just do it for a commercial purpose for other people. Mm -hmm. 
You can't just build a strip mall for some investors. Well, that's what they're doing. The I, that's they what are they're doing, doing it. <laughs> they are doing it. They so. are doing it. It was yeah. that Supreme Court case where they allow, you know, they start allowing quasi public interest, uh, commercial interest combo I'm pack. Gonna, I'm going to leave you guys with this thought. We need to start liquidating some of these government officials. You need to file a receivership petition in the courts. It, it's it's going to get attacked at first, but that's going to wake them up because we need to start doing that to them. I agree. You need to file an involuntary petition for appointing a receiver for Mr. So-and-so who's serving in this particular office. You do it as an individual. You liquidate him. You take his house and you sell it. Then you list his house for sale. You appoint a receiver. You can do this through arbitration, by the way. Wait a second. Karen says a small town in Michigan just did this. They should. They should. Who did, did this what? happen? Do you know the story? No. I'm trying to remember the story. Uh, it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll find it. Um, I just read it last week, and it was they. They fired. Uh, they they did a recall election because the the public did not like something that this the board was doing and they fired them all and they put new people in the treasury. Oh, I remember they were trying to um, build a lithium um, battery plant and the public was, yeah. they didn't want anything to do with that. Oh, okay. Is that they where the fires in all Wyoming are? Story. Nice. So they did voter recalls. That what they did, yeah. Karen? Because yeah, that exists did. in a lot of states. Okay, I yeah. thought you said they liquidated somebody. Is that oh, in I'm Wyoming? Sorry. I misspoke. No, it was in a small town in Michigan. I'll, I'll try to find the story. I think okay. I remember where I saw yeah, they it. Did that. Uh, they did that many years back in Colorado. See, some states have the voter recall, and they had a lot of people in the House that were anti pushing anti-gun legislation. And the people got together, created a petition. They, re they, they removed all the congressmen. Wow. Senators too. Good. Yeah. The the state congressmen and senators or state. 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 That's great. Wow. Yeah. Well, just I want to leave but it. But still, thought. what John's talking about is a little bit is a little bit more nuclear. Yeah, liquidate. Yeah. Liquidate your government official <laughs> who thinks that he can liquidate. I'm you. too more nuclear. Do it during, <laughs> yeah. during the divorce no, meeting or something. So many which, which was what really needs to happen, John, because they need to be spanked. Yeah. Because even when you yeah. remove them, they're just they're not spanked. Yeah, they're not. They would take the property. Right. Somebody well, this... creating, well, so I'm going to answer this question here. Somebody creating an LLC with a PMA, running a business situation forces him to take money from it. I don't understand what that is. So, like, you can, you, you, you probably have the wrong understanding of how to use your LLC. Your the ownership of your LLC is irrelevant. You have an LLC. It doesn't matter if it's owned by an association or whatever. So, but anyways, I'm sorry. But he's, I guess what he's saying is that he's that the LLC is now paying him, and will he have to pay taxes on that, as opposed to Probably, using the LLC bank account to no buy one, things? No one can force you to take on a certain financial risk. They might try to, unless he wants to accept the liability. So I, if I know more about the situation, which I'm going to say, I've seen many examples of this where people ask, ask me a similar question, and what it comes down to is this is we put the other person on notice and say, hey, look, by doing it this way, I, I'm going to be subject to a certain type of financial liability or obligation. Therefore, I'm passing that off to you. So you agree to indemnify me for X amount of dollars if I do this. And that usually ends it. Because they realize you, they, someone cannot force you into accepting a certain financial risk oh, or boy. loss against your own interests. There's some other problem going on there. All right. Yeah, you scared yeah. me when you said you wanted to liquidate the guy. I, I was afraid to ask what you meant. <laughs> like in the movies, where they point yeah. some stuff <laughs> at him and he turns into some jello or something. <laughs> now that must be pretty bad. That's yeah. interesting. No, we're not doing that. Maybe we could <laughs> liquidate some judges. Is we're that sort of shit. rolling yes. around? Yes, that sounds like a really good idea. We're take a shit and sell like it. Like Tanya right? Chutkin. <laughs> But I mean, imagine if the other judges who are involved in this and knowingly, they, we do this to one judge and what's going to happen to the other ones? They're going to realize, oh, wait a minute, their association is bigger than ours. I mean, look at all the people in the tax protest movement that are chasing their asses around. 
in circles. They have no clue what they're doing. Imagine if they just, they have a common interest. What if they actually became effective? Instead of complaining about paying taxes, why not go liquidate some of these government officials? Go liquidate them. Um, li receivership predates our government. <laughs> we don't need the constitution for this. Point a receiver and conduct a receivership. So you have to liquidate up the food chain, though, because see, like, what's going on right. in Texas and Georgia and everywhere? Just pick the easiest one. The property tax, yes, yeah, coming down to the so the comptroller, the, the 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 state revenue department, like Georgia Department of Revenue, it's got the comptroller and it's ordering the counties to raise the millage rates and yeah. the fair market value on properties. The appraiser are, isn't really wanting to do it necessarily, and the tax assessors don't know what the hell to do. Because it's going to raise mom and pop's one hundred thousand dollar house. So three, they're taxing the inflation. Yes, and, and they're, that's what they're doing. They're saying no. The, the, the rich people are using our government to pass off their risk onto us. Correct. It's doing forever. Yeah. Is that? You want me to say that again? It's been happening forever. Yeah, it's just a different way of doing it. So the super rich people. That's exactly right. They've been using our government for decades from the, from the beginning. Okay, the super rich people use our government uh, to pass off risk that they're incurring. Onto us, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but the receivership would still work as you think about it. Because if you do it in a local government, just like Janet and Karen posted those links, okay. Mm -hmm. So we tell them, hey, we're going to remove every damn one of y'all, and we want ones that'll fight. Now we'll support you, and you fight the state controller. You you do a receivership uh, with you. You can use arbitration. File a petition to appoint receiver for involuntary receivership. In the receivership of, and you identify who the prop, what the property is, who the debtor is. So sometimes you have to create the debt. Sometimes you have to give notice or whatever. But once you do all that, you conduct a receivership. Do it through arbitration. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. I haven't. <laughs> Elaine likes this one. I haven't I given you guys the examples yet, but I'm just saying we can do things like this. We're already doing it for the other things, you know, easements and things like that. Hmm. And the security agreements on your privacy data. Would you say that we could do receiverships on the very uh, companies that are trying to take back easement land? You should. I think okay. you can, I think that's a tool that you could you could yes. use. All right, we'll have to talk about that because maybe the criteria that's something... for receivership are very finite. You can find what they are because normally receiverships are are done through the court system. Mm -hmm. So just go look at what the pleading requirements are to request that the court appoint a receiver for an involuntary receivership. Well, because here's the thing that is like rattling around in my brain as you say this, uh, you know, Michael's situation in, in California, yeah. the, the California receivership group that Mark Adams is in is bankrupt. There's right. been, there's you, you a, need to call a receivership because of that. So yeah. that would be interesting. That would be an interesting yes. uh, attack on him as well as the arbitration that is already he's being called into. Yeah. We should talk just, about that. Yeah, we should. You just have to start with the claim. There has okay. to be some claim and then petition for involuntary receivership. And the more creditors you can have, the better. So and we could talk about the details. Okay. Yeah. So we, could do it to a, we could do it to attorneys too. They're involved yeah. in court cases. You should liquidate individual attorneys. Record. Yeah. Individual attorneys one-on-one. -on -one, individual one -on -one. attorneys. Yeah, DOJ yeah. attorneys, any of them, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Divorce yeah. attorneys? Yes, yes, yes. Liquidated. Divorce okay. attorneys, all yes. of them. File the receivership. When they get attorney fees from you, you send them a notice in demand to return the money or whatever. Mm -hmm. Even if you didn't pay them, if the judge ordered you to pay them, you send a notice in demand to give you the money. Even They've already been paid. In certain, like, for, for example. For those that have been paid, you, you do that. You send them a notice in demand, and then you file a receivership against them. Okay, this could be fun. We need to do this. I know, it's, I know. We we're do. gonna clean Absolutely house. True. We're gonna clean house if we do Absolutely this. Absolutely true. Okay. Let's call opening a can of whip ass. Whoop ass. <laughs> whoop ass on them. That is exactly what we're doing. We need to. Look, they started it. It's like I told you guys last July. I'm not. I, was, I wasn't joking. That was a true story. When when I my my brother got his ass kicked because he has a big mouth and I'm supposed to protect him, but we go to my dad because I didn't want to go fighting. So I went to my dad and my dad said, he was ignoring us. I was telling, you this, telling him the story and my brother's standing there crying. And my dad's looking around us watching TV, like we were annoying him, right? And finally he stopped watching TV and he looked at us and he said. 
<laughs> he just froze. Let That's a punchline. He froze. There are two of you. Don't come to me with this shit. What? How about now? Am yes. I there? Yes. Yeah. Stop frozen. Back. No, so no, my, dad, my, my, my dad is done ignoring us. And finally he says, look, guys, there are two of you. Don't come to me with this shit. I don't care what you have to do, but you need to both work together and go beat somebody's ass. Don't come here crying. And what am I supposed to do? I don't care if you have to go to my shed and get a couple of two by fours out, but go beat somebody's ass. And I don't want to hear about it. And so I was dumbfounded because the year before he took me to jail because I beat up some kid. My dad <laughs> took me to jail. Mm -hmm. I remember you telling that story. Yeah. And, and right. so he's telling me this and I thought, okay, well, what well, is it? It wasn't until I got older that I was thinking, and my dad was kind of a jerk too, you know, but, but he was right because what he was saying is be effective and stop being a baby and a complainer, be effective, find a solution because no one else is going to help you. You have to do it. And you're lucky enough to have a brother. Mm -hmm. So we're lucky enough to be able to work with each other. We kind of all have like mind. You can work with two or three people. I have the discussion for him. You guys have you know, other groups you're involved with, you know, you have a common interest. The tax system really brings people together. Cryptos brings people <laughs> together, but you got like other problems. Else, yeah. yeah, and you can solve them with these some of these techniques, but look at receivership, okay? So I would just say, as an example, look at the criteria for receivership and the procedure that's involved in Texas. Texas is a very good example for receivership. I think it's chapter 128. I forget. Yeah, but in, in Texas is a good state because they're already... It, there's already a bunch of I mean, lawsuits. Look at your on. governments. Your governments are insolvent. Why can't you do a receivership on the government? Mm -hmm. The only problem I have with that is you, you probably need some way to replace what their function is because mm. they're probably doing stuff you need. So it's like, you know, people don't want to overthrow the king because even though he's killing people and taking their food, uh, he's still going to protect you from the other countries, you know, stuff like that. So, you know, think, think it through. But receivership can be, I think, a powerful tool. Uh, I think attorneys and judges are good. I think attorneys and judges are <laughs> their game. They started it and we should just go teach them a lesson. Look, if you go after a couple of attorneys, it's going to send a message to everybody in the system. Mm -hmm. Your attorney, the attorney is the lo lowest uh, uh, hanging fruit, mm -hmm. if it were. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, it actually, receivership is very civil. If you look at the French Revolution, they use it's guillotine. Certain, receivership is a very civil function in our society. Yeah. It's necessary. Think about it like this. If you're in a small town and, you know, it's like uh, Green Acres. Y'all ever see Green Acres where the plumber mm -hmm. is also the oh, sheriff yeah. and he's the mayor? Okay. Mm -hmm. So if it's a town like that, and let's say the you got families, okay, and the families have lots of children and the, the father's out there doing the heavy lifting, okay, he's he's farming the, the, the land, right? But let's say for your family, your dad dies when you're young. And so your mom can't really do it and you can't do it, but you need help. So you have resources and the local neighbors come in and they, they decide how to help you. And in order to do that, they need to divvy up your property. It needs to be absorbed into the community. This is called receivership. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling you. This is way before our constitution. It's just being used against us right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah just like easements easements are being used against us we're just, we're just mirroring them back yeah what's this janet on the on the youtube thing oh oh, oh the town thank you for that oh the, the town, town. Yeah. Yeah. Watch yeah you guys click there. on the link now because I'm, I'm about to end the call so and, uh, this, is, this is recorded is janet. yeah appreciate you doing that very interesting so yeah there, there's a so so Check that out. Give this stuff, stuff some thought. I'm going to publish this one. Did I publish the last one? Did I put the link up yet? I didn't. I didn't do any edits to the last one we did on the on the tenth. When where are you going to publish this? On uh, Telegram. I'll just give okay. you guys the private link. So if I haven't done it, I will. Um, and okay. Last week I did not edit that one. I'm just going to publish it just like it is. Okay. All right, y'all. Thanks for joining. I All right. Thank you. Gla I'm so Bye. glad you were safe. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thanks so much. Appreciate yeah. it. All right. Have a nice weekend. See you next you week. Too. Bye. Bye. Bye.